Hey, what's good comic fans? This is a top three. It's a weekly video series where we bring you our personal top picks um, every Wednesday. And so you're here with uh, Comfire Rich. And I'm Comfire Nate. And the first one we're going to be talking about is Justice League 42. Now, I tried really hard to push this back for Rich, and Rich kind of didn't get a bit, didn't enjoy the 40 one as much as I think you might have enjoyed 42 but uh I like 42 right. man 42 was was pretty exciting especially in 42 was uh 40 I like 42 better because I understood a little bit more um and it, it really clicked more when uh you know towards the end where the dark seeds baby mama kind of gave like a you know explanation of kind of what was going on and so that kind of helped me put all the pieces in order on like who was on what side and what was kind of happening so that helped a lot up until that point though I was kind of lost I feel like they jumped here and then they jumped there and then somebody was talking and then there'd be like a middle of a fight with somebody and like I was lost up until that point but yeah no I, th I think I think that did that for more than just you I mean I was the same boat like I kind of had an idea what was going on but I was like I needed that conversation to kind of put me put me back on the right track. So, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, but once they did that, I was I was like, okay, now I'm kind of into this. Now I kind of want to see this. So you've got you know, Darkseed. Who um, now explain who who that chick is? Is that like Queen of like the Athenians or whatever? Of like, well, she's she's one of the Amazons. So she's basically the right. same thing as Wonder Woman. Um, you know, as far as who she is. Um, but basically, I guess a long time ago, their goal was to, um, was to defeat Darkseid. That was their, that was what they were sent to do. And they lost their way. And she decided the best way to do it was to, uh, to hook up with Darkseid, make a baby, <laughs> and, uh, and send yeah. that baby on a, uh, a mission to kill him, uh, you know, years into the, into the future. So, um, it's pretty crazy. I mean, I thought it was interesting when um, Wonder Woman and Grail are fighting and she's like analyzing her as they fight. Like, you know, she's faster. You know, this, that. Mm -hmm. Like, she could kind of already get a good vibe about what's what's going to happen. Um, but I don't, I, I have a feeling we're going to see them two going up against each other before this uh, arc's over, for sure. Yeah, but that chick, she got to be bad, though. I mean, you're talking about Darkseed's daughter and... An Amazonian chick with the same powers as Princess Diana have a baby. Then you know the chick bad, and then uh, apparently she's been training under the um, Anti Monitor, which that was her quest. You know to go and find this dude out and kind of team up with him because he has the ability to beat Dark uh, Dark Seed. Yeah, no, it's it's gonna come to clap. I mean, you're gonna have basically Dark Seed and Anti Monitor going at each other and. I don't know how Grail's going to fit into the equation, but I kind of feel like, uh, you know, she's going to have a big part to play, and I feel like, you know, Anna Monitor wants that power from Darkseid, you know, as far as he's concerned, he, he absorbs planets, he takes their powers, so he wants, <clears throat> he wants Darkseid, he wants Apocalypse, he wants that planet, he wants to drain mm -hmm. the life force, you know, that's what he, he craves, so... Uh, if there's any way to do it, uh, this seems like the best chance he's got. Um, yeah. And it's, at the same time, you know, the, the Justice League are like, hey, you guys want to fight it out? Do it somewhere else. But unfortunately, they're going to do it on Earth. And that's where they have a yeah. problem. You know, if it was going on anywhere else, we probably wouldn't be having this story. You know, if they were doing it on their own planet. But uh, here on Earth, it's going to be a it's going to be a big old mess. You know, basically... She says, you know, you know, billions are gonna die, so it's gonna be crazy. There's um there's an interesting thing that I'm I'm kinda waiting to see unfold. One is apparently um Superman has ended up on Apocalypse mm. and Apocalypse is like holding down his, you know, his number one soldier or whatever, saying, No, we're gonna send the slaves out there and they're like the slave's not gonna be able to beat him. And he says, I want his soul and I was like, Well, what do they mean take his soul? And it made a really strong point thinking that, you know, Superman sees the good in everybody and he's like, he's going to see on this planet that that's not the case and that we're going to break him down mentally. Yeah. 
is kind of what they're going to do because he's just going to be waves and waves of guys. So I'm interested to see how that plays out and where that's going to go. And um, then obviously, you know. Well, and he's not there alone. He's also there with probably his most, <laughs> you know, his arch nemesis, Lex Luthor. So, uh, oh, two, I, for, I totally forgot. I don't know why I forgot yeah, about that. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. Two are going to probably have to uh, have to play nice and do some, uh, you know, in the end it might boil down to Luthor has to help Superman and, and vice versa. I mean, that's, they're the only two people on that planet that, you know, that can help each other. part of that planet. and you Yeah, know, so I, it's going to be interesting. See, that's why I was lost. That's why I was lost because it just kind of opened and I was like, oh, your sister shot you and a bullet I didn't recognize and they're on Apocalypse. And like, I don't remember them going to Apocalypse in the other issues. So I, that's what I mean by I jumped around. But once um, it kind of come to head, I was well, it's like she shot curious her to see where that goes. Think, like it was like a, like a boom tube went off or something like that. So I don't. I don't know. I might have to go back now that you said that. I, I don't exactly remember how it happened, but uh, yeah, it did happen, and, and um, it put him <laughs> it put him in a crazy situation all around. So, and then the um, the other part, which is I guess a segue kind of nice into the next comment a little bit, but is when the Watcher comes down and transports the Justice League. To, um, to another place where they're out of the sight of the anti-monitor and the people who's looking for them so they can rest rest and uh, recuperate. Princess Diana jacks him up with the whip. She ain't taking no for an answer. Jerks his butt off that little seat he's on and Batman's like, I got this. <laughs> Has a seat in this thing. And I was like, oh, this ought to be interesting. He's asked, still asking questions about his parents. He's like, damn, it's, he's, he's all about his parents. And uh, How about that, How next about that thing, second question he asked? Um, oh, who is who is the Joker's real name? Yeah, you talking about that one? Yeah, yeah. I was waiting for an answer. I was like, "Oh, this ought to be good." And it was just like, "No, you're kidding me." I know. And then it was just like all this electricity and stuff going off, and he's like, "Oh, Batman, he can't even handle my ring. Um, this is too much power for him." And he's like, "You all right?" And he was like, "I'm a guy now." And I was like, "Oh snap." <laughs> It's about to get popping up in yeah, here. No, that that definitely that's exciting. I, I, you know, Batman's probably one of, if not my favorite superhero. So <laughs> to see him get thrown in, we know this, we got like fourteen Batmans in the top three every uh, week. I can't help it. So, you know. uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, with that going down, I mean, psh, dude, <clears throat> I don't know what's going to happen next. No, that actually excited me, even from somebody who hasn't read all the other ones to build up to this point. So I couldn't imagine somebody who's been following this storyline. From issue one all the way to now, they're probably really excited because when I saw that, I was like, oh, that, that's bad. <laughs> that might, I don't have no idea what, what they can do with that or what they're going to do. If he's able to get off the chair, if he's going to maintain some of this power, or more knowledge, or what it is. Is this going to be, because up until this point, like, how are they going to defeat the Anti-Monitor? How are they going to defeat, you know, Dark Side? Because they just got molly -whopped. That's why they're there in the first place. Yeah. So is this going to help give them some knowledge or information to turn the tide? I think it is. But um, you could hope. No, it was tight. the The artwork was nice. I was like, man, I, man, he kind of went uh, Super Saiyan there in that chair for a minute. And I was like, God dang. Yeah, no, J but um, I really Taylor liked it. I great. thought it was he, bad. He's a really good artist. He he's done a lot of stuff, and it's it's that more realistic comic art that uh, not too realistic, but realistic enough that makes it look like a comic of the old days. So it it looks really good. Uh, his art combined with the story makes it even that much better but yeah on to the next this one. is um <laughs> yeah 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 on the next one since we ended with batman we'll move on over to batman's son which is robin what is it son of batman son of batman number two son of son of batman number two and we haven't we haven't done number one and you know, well, I guess we can talk about both of them together since it's this. I mean, they they go together very well. Yeah, number number um, one came out. I think one of those weeks where we had a whole lot of good stuff coming out, so it just didn't make the cut. Um, it was yeah. something that was interesting, and two just kind of, I mean, one kind of set the story, and two really started giving you a good direction of where the story's going. And um, for those that don't know, you know, you know, Damien is the son. Of Bruce and Talia Al Ghul, 
So, which I didn't know until I read this comic. And when I when I saw the grave, he was like, "Mom." And when I read the the grave the gravestone, I was like, "Say what?" Yeah. So I was like, "That boy got to be tight." <laughs> yeah. So he's he you know he was trained by the you know they trained him for the League of Assassins. You know he was going to be the guy that takes over and all this kind of stuff. And way 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 back in in the comic days, uh, Batman rescued him uh, from them and started training him to be Robin. And then, about a year and a half ago, they killed him off in uh, Batman Incorporated. He was killed by the heretic, and so was Talia, for that matter. And, um, you know, Batman went on a crazy adventure, uh, you know, and if you want to read a little bit more detail, you can look at my article on the website, comfire.com. Um, but he... Comfirecomics.com. People are going to be going to an address that don't even exist. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you record a video when you're half asleep. Uh, you miss half the, uh, the comic there. Um, but yeah. basically, um, he goes to Apocalypse, he brings his son back, and now Damien, you know, he's always lived in the shadow of two different things. He's, he wants to be Robin, he wants to be a son, but he's been trained to be an assassin. He's trained to be, you know, a killer. And mm -hmm. during the the year of blood, which is what they talk about in this, you know, he basically went out and did a bunch of bad things uh, to put trophies in his room for the uh, League of Assassins. So it was kind of like his final stages of his training was the the year of the blood, 365 days. Every day was like a new mission. He was out, right? He killing exactly. things. Exactly. So he feels like. For him, the best thing he can do is, is to kind of try to make it all right. So this is kind of like his redemption story. You know, he's trying to make all the yeah. stuff right um, that he messed up along the way and and try to feel like a hero again. You know, because, you know, even, I mean, Batman, Batman treats him like a kid because he is a kid. I mean, he's like, I think he's like 11 or 12. You know, that's how yeah. old he is. So, but he's also unbelievably skilled. And unbelievably, you know, able to to do all the things that Batman does. So, I mean, if you look at it and say, well, you know, why did Batman not, you know, hold Robin back or Dick Grayson's Robin or Tim Drake's Robin? Well, they weren't really his kids. <laughs> I mean, not, yeah. not, not to put a, I mean, I guess you can kind of get that vibe from it. You know, this is his well, blood. So maybe well, there's just a little bit more invested in keeping him alive. Um, or at least trying to, and on, I think he's more or less trying to erase the assassin mentality and instill what right. Batman, you know, means. You know, Batman doesn't kill, so Batman's trying to, trying to get through his head that, hey, listen, you don't have to do it this way. You need to do it this way. So, um, they're both stubborn people, so it's a, a lot of back and forth between Batman and Robin. So, um... He's on the well, the kid's been completely brainwashed, so right. obviously Batman doesn't want to just continue to send him out all the time because he still has those tendencies of, you know, slicing right, and dicing. Right. So he, and, he wants to kind of keep him in check, and yeah. you know, Damien gets, it just frustrates Damien because he, he's, he's used to being how he was, and now he feels like, but he, he understands it and he respects it, you know. It start, I, think, I think the fact that he's wanting this redemption just shows that, that Batman's rubbing off on him. You know, he feels bad about the stuff he did, and he feels like this is a chapter that needs to be closed in order for him to to move on. So that's pretty much what this comic's about. And it, it's, I know for a fact from what I was reading uh, from Comic Con that they're going to do a upcoming story arc that's going to be called Robin War. Um, it's going to have it's going to cross over into this comic. Uh, Son of Batman, it's also going to cut into another comic that we've talked about, We Are Robin. So, they're going to have all these Robins mm. coming together for an epic story arc called We Are or Robin War. So, <laughs> what's that going to mean? I don't know, but I'm excited to see what it's going to be about. You yeah. Know? So, no, it'll, it'll be good. He's, he's teamed up with, um, I guess, an unlikely person unknown, or unknown's daughter, who was originally wanting to kill him. But since she's seeing that he's trying to, you know, get redemption, she's going to, I guess, help him, go along with him, make sure he sees it through. Um, there's still going to be some bitterness there, obviously. Robin doesn't want a sidekick. He don't want help. He don't want a partner. 
Um, she doesn't really like them, so they're they're going to go back and forth, obviously, throughout this story arc. But um, I like this. I've never really been a big fan of Robin just because ah, he's a kid. It's whatever. It's hard for me to visualize it. But now this this character, like, dude, is sassy. Like he is. You know, he's mouthing off. He don't care. He's nothing but pure attitude, mm -hmm. and um, he's a bad one to boot too. I mean, he just. The confidence he's, he has, and he's you know, the way he's whooping people and stuff, I'm like, yeah, I want to see a lot more of this character. And as many I think I'm going to enjoy reading the course of time. Damien reading of the rest of these comics, more of a confidence and kick to it. Say that again. No, I just said that you know, of all the Robins, you know, they all kind of are very similar in a way. But with Damien, he's definitely mm -hmm. got a little bit more of an attitude. He's got like a chip on his shoulder. Um, and he's yeah, trying you could to, just uh, you could see it. He's trying to prove it. Yeah, he's trying to prove that he's 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 he wants to be the best Robin. So you know he he's in the shadow of of Dick Grayson and Tim Drake and uh, uh, what's his name? I yeah. can't even think of his name right. Uh, Jason Todd. So I mean he's he's got all these guys he's got to live up to, and not only that, he's the son of Batman. So if you're right. gonna be the best Robin, you want this one to be the best Robin because he is the son of Batman so uh, we'll see I'm excited it's again again it's new and it's something that you could check out and uh, I'm looking forward to it so the next one on our list is postal number five so mm -hmm. if you guys have read uh, any of our posts before we talked about postal number four way way back um, it feels like it's been almost two months since this one comes out. It uh, might have had like a little break, um, but uh, Postal Five. Again, this this uh, this particular issue. Um, I think I, I mentioned in my article. It doesn't really set up a story, um, and it doesn't really complete a story. Kind of feels like a gap filler between story arcs, you know? Because sometimes you just want to throw out a issue yeah. that might not have nothing to do with the other stuff. So this issue just kind of just It really does. I mean, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it was great. It just it it was a solo issue, you know, like if you want to get a good yeah. idea of what this character and what the show's uh the series is about, read this issue. And this issue is probably a good compressed version of what this character is all about. So you get a good compressed version of him. Um, his family dynamic, the girl he cares about, and basically he just happens to run into some crazy people along the way. Now, it gives yeah. a little backstory to these people. Is that going to have anything to do with the next story arc? I have no idea. But yeah. it's interesting because I really had no freaking clue where it was going with. Because I'm reading this the whole time like, where are they going to go with this? You know, is his dad going to show up here? What's going to happen, you know? That's what I kept thinking. Yeah, when he opened the door, that's yeah. the first thing I thought. I was like, oh, his dad's going to be there. Somebody else went to hit him. No, just, just random crazy people. crooks. He just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time type situation. Yeah. They was in these crazy masks, and it was like real creepy and stuff. No, it, but it, again, felt, like, it felt like True Detective, <laughs> if you've ever seen True Detective. <laughs> the first season with the crazy it. mask and stuff. No, it was, it was a little weird. Well, in his classic attitude where he doesn't show any fear or anything, he's just kind of like, oh, I'll sit down and, you know, talk with this guy. And, and the whole time he's In like, his mind, he keeps saying, I need to get that yeah. gun. My dad would take <laughs> I get, that, gun. I get that gun. And it was just, uh, it was uh, it was neat. I like that. It, again, I don't know where it's going, if it's going anywhere. The only thing I think they might draw from is not those characters in general, but what they were, like the message he was trying to send to him about mm. take what you want. Um, yeah, they might. Nothing be, can they stop might be you. Pushing that, pushing that home in his mind. That could be a big, uh, big part of the, ne the next story arc, for sure. Yeah, because they kind of have this underlining um, religious thing with you know. In the it ends in the last episode with him viewing his dad as like a demon, devil, dragon type character, yeah. and um, and then you get in this episode and you have this guy that's still talking about you know. No heaven, no hell, no this, no that. You just, you know, take what you want and this spiritual, I'm going to show you a new way and transcend mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. And so at the end when he's transcribing these letters, he holds these to the side. And I like, oh, 
I really like that scene at the end. This guy's giving a speech about sometimes to get rewarded, you don't have to do anything. You know, just kind of death will happen on its own. And then there's that chick, she's bleeding out, and he's like, I could help her. She looks like she wants help or something. And he's like, then I think about what I want, and I do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, dang. I was like, that was kind of cool. I like, for whatever reason, I like that that line into it. And then what happens? The girl that he likes that he was thinking about, oh, you just popped in my head. She pops in at the end. And each each issue, you can tell his confidence is, is uh, rising, and he's... I don't know, turn him more into his dad, but he's just, he's getting a little bit more hardcore. Yeah, he's getting than, a little, you know what I'm saying? He's, he, he's starting to understand things a little bit. And maybe that's what this is, is just another lesson for him to, uh, to kind yeah. of learn, a, an internal personal lesson to figure out, you know, exactly how he needs to do to, what he needs to do to step up to that next level. So uh, I, I think that might be it. That's probably a really good, uh, you know, probably a good uh, explanation of what was going on in this uh, in this issue so um, but how, how'd you like it at the end there we had the nice little the cup on the card and it was the death card oh that said lovers and was bleeding and stuff yeah, yeah. so I mean I guess that's probably a yeah, little he, hint towards you know something but I, I don't know I love the character oh I just I, I didn't I just know if it was a hint I just kind of yeah, I just took it as that's kind of what that guy was saying. To get rewarded, you have to do these things, and he let that woman die, and then he had that card to kind of signify him and well, uh, I think it's just the his fact girl. that he kept it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like he kept the card. And he th kept the letters. He kept the letters. I don't know if you read those at the end. They have the letters yeah. Yeah. written out to the characters. You know, I read them and stuff, and he kept them. So I don't – little again, more into, like you said, his training and his thought process and how it might be changing. So – I don't know. I like this one. This is, um, out of all the top threes that we do, this is, you know, up there for me every time it comes out. I'm excited uh, for this one because it's different. I mean, if you're not into all the superhero stuff and you want something that's a little bit different, this is the perfect comic. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just um, get over just over a good storytelling. Superheroes. It's time for some just really good comics about stuff yeah. that has absolutely nothing to do with superheroes. And, you know, as cool as this guy is, he's not a superhero, but he's still pretty cool. <laughs> And they yeah. do a great way of making it interesting, telling a simple story about a guy with uh, with Asperger's that's uh, still very interesting. Yep. Well, that's our top three. It's Postal number five. It's Justice League 42. And it is uh, Son, of Bat Son of Batman. What is it? Robin? Robin Son of Batman. Son of Batman number issue two. two. Yeah, that. So, um, look, like, comment, subscribe. Get in the conversation. Um, hit us up on Twitter, man. Let us know what you think. You know, tell us your top your top picks, or you know, maybe continue talking about the comments we talked about today. Um, you can find us at Comfire Rich and Comfire Nate. Um, until next time, we out. See ya.